Hey, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with AR, and we've got your 2050 climate forecast for Hawaii and the U.S.-affiliated Pacific Islands. The people of this region know things look serious, and you all are getting ready. There's huge energy, grassroots energy, policy-level energy, and tremendous mobilization to adapt to climate change in the islands. Lots of knowledge and resource sharing is happening on the ground. So for many of you in the islands, and there are 1.9 million people in this region, this forecast may be news that you already know, but the rest of us, we all need to understand what you are facing and why it is so important that we not only build resiliency on the mainland and our mainland communities, but that we also work to cut emissions. Because the forecast we're all looking at is pretty fixed for 2050, but it changes a lot for 2100 based on what we do in the next 10 years. The islands need us all to work together for their protection in 2100. Let's talk about sea level rise in this context. With emerging technology, we'll be able to scrub carbon from the air, maybe. This could be an important part of future resilience strategies. But nobody can put sea level rise back in the bag. We can't refreeze Greenland's great glaciers. Not on a time scale that's going to work for us, at least. So if we reduce emissions, the sea level rise, it'll slow down around 2050. And the sea level rise is going to get a little crazy. It's going to accelerate in the next 10 and especially the next 20 years. We're going to want it to slow down. If we don't reduce emissions, the acceleration will continue. If we don't reduce emissions, there is so much more beauty that will be lost that will be under the waves by 2100. Here's what we're looking at with sea level rise in the U.S. affiliated Pacific Islands. There's a probability of a foot and a half, foot, foot and a half increase by 2050 which is gonna have a major impact on many of today's beaches. After 2050, sea level rise is projected to increase further with four feet total, not out of range of probability by the end of the century. With the sea rising, there's also the issue of salt water getting into the groundwater. Freshwater resources are always a challenge on islands, and these challenges will intensify this century. Not only due to this issue with saltwater contamination, but NOAA is expecting decreases in rainfall to the region. And as the islands are projected to get less rain, there's also going to be less surface water in streams available. While the overall rainfall is likely to decrease, there are other changes to the weather that are worth noting. Tropical cyclone patterns are likely to shift north, which will probably bring more cyclones into the region. There is also an expected doubling in frequency of La Nina and El Nino events. There is a probability that not only will these characteristic weather patterns be occurring more often, but that the individual weather events in them are likely to become more extreme. This picture comes together to suggest that freshwater resources are going to really need to be prioritized and that many ecosystems on the islands will change as they become gradually drier. In the ocean, we're also looking at changes to the ecosystem. I am very sad to report that NOAA has projections for the onset of annual coral bleaching in the region. The Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands is likely to see annual coral bleaching events begin around 2035. In Guam, annual coral bleaching events may start in some areas by 2036 and become widespread by 2038. In American Samoa, NOAA is projecting widespread annual coral bleaching events around 2040. For the Hawaiian Islands, Annual bleaching events will begin in the mid-2030s around the bigger islands. These events will be widespread by 2040. These bleaching events will have ecosystem-wide impacts. By 2050, there's an anticipated 15% decline in the fisheries. And that decline could go to 50% by 2100 if we don't check emissions now. There are other things that can be done. There are heroic efforts underway to save the corals through farming, through selective breeding to increase heat tolerance, but there's a bottom line here. We need to stop heating the ocean up if we want to preserve these beautiful places. So wrapping this all up, we're looking at a very serious situation. But the people of this region, they are organized, they are responding, they are adapting to the changes that are coming. But these communities are disproportionately vulnerable to the choices the rest of us make. If we don't reduce emissions now, if we keep doing what we've been doing, we will cause our fellow Americans tremendous suffering. Tremendous loss. And to all of us, these are beautiful places with species that exist and that can exist nowhere else. We impoverish ourselves. We impoverish our world when we lose these things. The people of this region, they've got what it takes to handle local resiliency issues. 
but the choices we all make are important. Those of us on the mainland, we need to work together to cut emissions. The people of Hawaii and the U.S. affiliated Pacific Islands are working hard to save their homelands, but they can't do it alone. We all need to work together or the seas will continue to rise. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe. Help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.